Amen. Well, it's good to be here uh, in the presence of God with all of God's children. Amen. Amen. We just want to, if you would, just bow your heads with me as I pray. Father, we just thank you for this hour, this opportunity to, to really just glean from you, to hear from you. And I just pray, God, that you would just cleanse our minds and our hearts from all unrighteousness, anything that's not like you. And I pray now, God, that you will just impart wisdom, impart knowledge, impart revelation into our lives. I, I just thank you right now that every gift will be operational, functioning, that you've given us. Stir up the gift that's within us and help us to stir up our own gift that we may continue to do your will and fulfill each and every word that you have spoken over our lives. And Father, we decree and declare open atmosphere for your angelic host to move and back and forth and minister to your people. We thank you right now that everything is subject to the name of Jesus. And by that name, demons must flee. And we tell every dark and evil spirit to go now in the name of Jesus. But God, we don't focus on the powers of darkness. We don't focus on the challenges we've had today, this week, this month. But right now, we lean in and we focus on you to hear what thus said the Lord. And now move miraculously by your will, by your grace, by your mercy. Touch somebody's life today. Let them hear something that will change, metamorph, change their lives totally in the name of Jesus. Father, we don't want to leave this place the same way we came in. We desire to leave this place edified, enlightened, and encouraged that we may do your will. We say thank you. We say thank you for your grace and your mercy. We say thank you, Lord, that you woke us up this morning. We say thank you, God, that you started us on our way. We say thank you, God, that you gave us another opportunity to come and give you praise. We say thank you, God, for our neighbor on our left and our right. We say thank you, God, for those that you have placed into our lives to help us reach the destination, the place that you've called us to. And we forever give you praise honor and glory in Jesus name and that I have everybody say amen amen well we thank God for all of you let's go right into the word I'm gonna start my text as we have been in this series called protect this house protect this house hey bro bro what's up uh y'all know I'm a little country just bypass me and you know just overlook that um We've been in this series, Protect This House. And next week, we're concluding the series, because I know some of you are probably tired of hearing this same title. Um, but I believe God has spoke through this series, Protect The House. How many know it's important for all of us to protect the house? And sometimes it's not only hearing the word, it's just being refreshed. Uh, to refocus, to kind of reshift our thinking. Um, sometimes we we allow things that we know better. <laughs> Anybody, you, you talk to your children, you you look at your child, you're like, why did you do that? You already know know better. And sometimes we're in the same place in our lives where we know better. But every now and then, the Holy Spirit has to remind us. Uh, or show us where we are lacking in his word. So let's go to 2 Corinthians 10, where we were taking our text. 2 Corinthians 10, I will be reading from the New Living Translation. And I believe it's on the screen, and maybe if I move out you all's way, some of you can see that um, over here to my right. So it says, we are human, but we do not or don't wage war as humans do we use God's what we use God's what come on talk back to me church we use God's what we use God's mighty weapons not worldly what weapons to knock down the strongholds of human reasoning and to destroy 
false arguments. We destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing who? God. We capture their rebellious thoughts and teach them to obey Christ. Now, if you'll jump with me to Ephesians 6, which has been our predominant text. Ephesians 6, verse 10. Ephesians 6, verse 10. Very familiar passage of scripture for those that's been in the church. It says in verse 10 in the NLT. What's up, brother? A final word, be strong in the what? Come on, y'all. Act like you had some breakfast this morning, even if you didn't. Right? A final word, be what? Come on. Act like you come from the Baptist church in the country. Be what? Strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all what? All what? All strategies. That means he has more than one. All strategies of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against what? Come on, church. We are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies. I know you think your boss on your job is your enemy. Yeah, I, I, I know sometimes you think your child is your enemy. <laughs> oh, nobody didn't get that. I guess I'm the only one. Uh, I, I know sometimes you think that person that's on social media that's talking bad about you is your enemy. But the Bible says that we fight not against what? Flesh and blood enemies, but against what? Evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world against mighty powers in this dark world and against evil spirits where? In heavenly places. I'm, I'm going to go back. Man, I know I'm making you work this morning. It's all good. All right. Verse 13. Here we go. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of what? Evil. There will be a time that evil comes. Somebody say amen. There will be a time that you will experience hardships. You will experience challenges. There will be dark seasons in your life. Can somebody say amen? There will be times, even as a believer, even as a follower of Christ, that you will have struggles, that you will have opposition. There will be dark times. Look at your neighbor and tell them there will be dark times. Then after the battle, somebody say after the battle, you will be able to stand firm after the battle. Somebody say after the battle. Can I just pause for a brief moment right here and insert that often we fail or we fall or we give up at the end of the battle. It's often that we've gone through so much challenge. Have you ever experienced, feel like you're wrestling something? Uh, maybe you said this, man, if it's not one thing, it's another. It seems like something happens over and over again. As soon as I take one step forward, I end up taking two. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Can relate to what I'm saying? Uh, uh, sometimes we experience these experience these challenges we experience opposition and what happens is the plan of the enemy is to get us to fatigue but how many of you know until you fatigue you cannot get stronger um oh jeff's not here he's in chicago everybody going to chicago for some reason and visiting yeah fred it's all good um i wish i had somebody that had some real big muscles but uh, we all need to go back to the gym. Anyway, um, <clears throat> um, have you ever worked out in the gym? Anybody? You do not build new muscle until that muscle becomes fatigued. Some of us, we think we're losing weight just because we go walk around for 10, 15 minutes on the treadmill and we think that everything is going to be good and we barely broke a sweat but we went to the gym 
And you, you wonder, why didn't I see results? I've been going to the gym 30 days straight. I've been getting on the treadmill for 15 minutes. Well, somehow, boy, I'm working you today. I'm sorry. I can't help it. Uh, but somehow you think you should have results, but you don't see any results because of the amount of effort you put in. And see, what happens, even not only in the natural, but also in the spirit, you cannot get stronger spiritually until you fatigue. That's why God allows you to go through some things that you're like, God, I'm ready to give up. I'm ready to throw in the towel. But he says, no, baby, I'm right here with you the whole time. Y'all know I like to tell stories, right? And so my wife, she, she picks at me, man. She picks at me. I, I love her, though. That's my baby. That's my sweet thing. And, but she picks at me, though, because, you know, she likes to, to show love for her daughter a little differently than me. And, you know, that's her baby and stuff. And, 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 and our age, because of our age, we don't allow or don't like to hear Olivia cry too long. You know, when, when I was 20, 21 years old, and I had my first son, he could cry all day, all night. I was just hard in the heart. And, and I was taught, just leave them there, they'll stop crying after a while. Anybody was raised like that? But, you know, I, I come to realize maybe that's why my son has some issues now. <laughs> anyway, that's, that's a whole nother story, a whole nother sermon. I'm sorry. But then uh, sometimes, though, I will allow her to cry just a little bit. I mean, really, just a little bit. And, and, and you know, God speaks to everything if you listen to him. And God says, just like she's crying for you to pick her up. She really wants you to pick her up right now. But you're still there with her. It's the same way in our lives that we're crying out to God. We're like, God, when are you going to fix this? When are you going to cause something to change? And all along we're crying, but he's right there. And, and he will never allow it to get so bad to the point where you just say, you know what? Forget it. I can't do it anymore. And then you totally give up and throw in the towel. Because I know there's some of us that have even gotten to that point. But guess what? He was still there. And some of us in some areas of our lives may have to fatigue a little tougher than other areas. Sometimes there's areas in our lives that we have built such barriers, such strongholds, that it, it takes a total breakdown of that barrier before you say, God, not my will, but Lord, let your will be done. I'm sorry, I'm all out my text. I, I'm, I just got so far off of my text, but verse 14, verse 14, stand your ground. I preached a sermon on that. Stand your ground, putting on the belt of what? truth we talked about that a few weeks ago and the body armor of God's what righteousness we talked about that last week verse 15 for shoes put on the peace that comes from the what for shoes put on the peace that comes from what so why are you trying to get peace from your boot Okay. You know, um, sometimes we try to get peace, if you like me, from a donut. <laughs> sometimes we try to get peace from Moscato. Oh, they, they want to be, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm with you. I'm with you today. Sometimes we try to get peace from vacation. However, true peace is not only in your physical element, but it's also in the spiritual element. And true peace comes from God's word. So when the storms of life get heavy and get chaotic, we're looking to the natural instead of the 
spiritual. And so what happens is the enemy deceives us and he allows us to continue to seek after the natural thing that we have often found peace in. That's why some of us keep falling into a backslidden state. We go back to our own ways because we're looking for something and God says your peace is not there. Your, your true peace comes from what? From me and my word. So in, in the midst of a dark place, God's word, when he speaks to you and he says, I am your peace. When trouble comes and it seems like there's no way out of it. When he gives you a word and he said, I'm here with you. That's the only thing that can resolve in your spirit that it's all going to be all right. Regardless what comes my direction, I'm going to rest in him. Somebody say amen. But for some reason, we try everything first instead of God's word. And then it goes on to say, we're putting on the shoes of the peace that comes from the good news. And then he says in verse 16, in addition to all of these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. Put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the spirit, which is what? The word of God. Pray in the spirit at all times and on every occasion. Watch this. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. So now we see the whole armor of God. But today I want to just take maybe the next eight to ten minutes to maybe unpack something dealing with the armor, specifically the helmet of salvation. The helmet of salvation. The helmet of what? Salvation. Uh, Mix it. Can you see if you can find that graphic that has Mandisa on there that points to all the armor of God, maybe you can find it. It's just a graphic. Oh, you got it? Oh, y'all can't see that. No way. Okay. Um, one thing I want to kind of emphasize is that the helmet of salvation, which points here, has some scriptures there. If you really want it, you can text me and I'll text it to you. It helps to guard your thoughts, helps you guard your mind, and how many you know, as we say often, an idle mind is what? The devil's workshop. Anybody heard that old statement before? And sometimes we do everything to stay busy, sometimes to avoid dealing with the things that we need to deal with. And God wants us to protect our minds. And so... In conjunction with protecting our mind, I want to talk about mental health. Somebody say mental health. Yeah, there's two times that there's an observance of mental health and mental health awareness. Um, month of May, month of October. And so I want to read this excerpt that I did take from mentalhealth.gov. Mentalhealth.gov, if you want to go research it, that's what I'm telling you, so you can go research it. Mental health includes our emotional, psychological, and social well-being. It affects how we think, how we feel, and how we act. It also helps determine how we handle stress, relate to others, and make choices. Mental health is important at every stage of life, from childhood, y'all hear that? From childhood all the way to adolescence through adulthood. Over the course of your life, if you experience mental health problems, your thinking, your mood, your behavior could be affected. Many factors contribute to mental health problems, including biological factors, right, such as your genes, the way you're made, your brain chemistry, life experiences, such as trauma or abuse, family history, Right? We call that like generational curses. It's passed down from one generation to the next. 
And so mental health problems are common, but help is available. People with mental health problems can get better and many recover completely. But here are some early warning signs, early warning signs. So if you're not sure if you or someone you know is living with mental health problems, experiencing one of the more of the following feelings or behaviors can be an early warning sign of a problem. So eating or sleeping too much or too little, right? You, you, you observe your family and your friends. They have normal habits, right? Normal things they do. When you start seeing abnormalities, start seeing them doing things differently, right? You know that it's possible there may be an issue. So you normally have a child that eats a lot, eat all the time, and then they stop eating or vice versa. Got it? Or a child that doesn't eat a lot and all of a sudden they want to eat everything, right? Pulling away from people and usual activities. That's how I know all the time in church when something's wrong. You know why? Because normally, right, Melissa, you'll see them, they'll come sit in the front row every Sunday. Now this Sunday they want to sit in the back row. Or they go missing for a month. Obviously something's what? Wrong. Right? That's just two indicators. Another one, having low or no energy. Just feeling lethargic all the time. Feeling numb or like nothing matters. Having unexplained aches and pains. Feeling helpless or hopeless. Smeak, smeaking, smoking, drinking, and using drugs more than usual. Feeling unusually confused, forgetful, on edge, angry, upset, worried, or scared yelling or fighting with family and friends, experiencing several mood swings that cause problems in relationships, having persistent thoughts and memories that you can't get out of your head, hearing voices or believing that things are not true. Some people call this paranoia. Thinking or harming yourself or others. Inability to perform daily tasks like taking care of your kids or getting to work or to school. So we see some of these things happen, such as anxiety disorders, behavior disorders, eating disorders, substance abuse or use disorders, mood disorders, obsessive compulsive disorder, personality disorder, psychotic disorders, suicidal behavior, and what we see in a lot of our veterans, post-traumatic stress disorder. So positive mental health allows people to realize their full potential, cope with the stresses of life. Notice that. Because we all are going to have stress. Work productively. Make meaningful contributions to their communities. So ways to maintain a positive mental health include getting professional help if you need it. Somebody say amen. I know in our culture that's not always accepted. But you have to do whatever it takes to protect your house. So if that means get help, get help. Getting professional help if needed. Connecting with others. One thing I realized is that if you isolate yourself on an island, you can never get help. It's very hard to get help when you just ostracize yourself and you want to be alone. I know some of us have a tendency not to want to be bothered with people. How many of you that's like that? Just sometimes just leave me alone. Right? I don't feel like being bothered. Don't call me. Don't send for me. Don't email me. Don't text me. Just leave me alone. How many of you like that? Just tell the truth in the church. It's all right. It's all right. All right. I could be like that sometimes too. So when you realize you have those tendencies, it's important to also recognize that if you fall in that state, that you, you must really fight against doing what's naturally known for you to do. So that means you have to make an extra effort to tell somebody, if you see me doing this, I already give you permission ahead of time to come get me. Look to your name and tell them, say, come get me, come get me. And that's what I believe that's so important in, in, in God's house. As believers, you need someone that has been given the authority to come get you. Yeah, you, you need to be able to have somebody that's able to pray for you, somebody that's able to intercede for you. And when they're, they're, they see you starting to act funny, they can say, you know what, 
uh, something's not right. You're not acting how you normally act. And, and you may get defensive. Like, I'm fine. I'm fine. But they're able to see the truth because they're on the outside looking in. You're on the inside looking out and you can't see yourself. But once you give that person permission, right, now all of a sudden, now you have another level of accountability and you say, you know what, I give you permission that you can speak into my life and you see something that's wrong or see something that uh, is not the norm, I give you permission. I want you to pray over me. I want you to speak into my life and when you see me isolating myself, pull me back. Y'all got it? A lot of men have that tendency where they'll isolate themselves and they won't speak to anyone. And, and that's why there's so many emotional affairs that happens with men. It's because they feel like they can't be heard. And so you have to be in the place that you're sensitive enough to say, you know what? Let me get in position where I actually hear you and not just try to tell you you're wrong. Oh. All right, let me leave that alone. Let me, let me leave that alone. And so the helmet of salvation, why it's so critical? Because the enemy, if he can plant seeds of negativity in your mind, he can cause you to give up on God. Helmet. Of salvation. Every day you must protect your thoughts from the strategies of the enemy. Every day he wants to plant seeds into your mind, to your thoughts of negativity. He wants to plant seeds of doubt in your mind where you don't trust God, where you can't believe God. And so you have to protect your mind. You have to protect your thoughts. You say, Pastor, how do I do that? Sometimes you may have to create the atmosphere in order to protect your mind. You may have to create the atmosphere. Maybe it's by prayer. Maybe you have to surround your atmosphere with prayer in order to help protect your what? Your mind. To protect your what? Your thoughts. Sometimes you may have to play worship music all day. Sometimes you have to set the environment that's conducive for the Spirit of God to move even on your behalf, even when you're not thinking about it. So you have to say, you know what, I'm going to make an environment that's conducive for the Holy Spirit to move and have his way. See, you have to say, you know what, I, I, I have to realize it's just not in my own power. It's just not in my own ability. But God, I know you make intercession for me. So now I'm going to make an environment that's conducive for your spirit to flow for you to have your way and see I want somebody that's here today to recognize that the enemy is not just after your body he's after your mind because even if he gets your body he cannot have your mind if your mind is given over to Jesus Christ you got to say Lord let this mind be in you which was also that was in Christ Jesus for I don't want to give up I don't want to throw in the towel but, but help me to be strengthened in my inner thoughts help me to be strengthened in the way I see things you got to protect your mind look to your neighbor say protect your mind protect your mind at all costs you must protect your mind protect your thoughts don't allow the enemy to tell you all types of negative things and plant seeds of negativity into your mind into your thoughts but protect your mind protect your mind the enemy try to say well things not going to work out today you have to know that if God is for me <laughs> hello somebody if God is for me if God is on my side if God said he'll never leave me nor forsake me that wherever I am he's there with me see you gotta protect your mind and protect your thoughts and when things get really bad and get really tiresome you gotta say God shall be a shield for me Hello, somebody. God will strengthen me in the time of my own weakness. God will keep me. But you have to be able to speak even to your mind and tell your mind to align to the word of God and believe and trust on the word of God. And God says that you must have faith. That means I can't give up. I have to have faith. That means when it looks like it's not going to work out. 
y'all not hearing me today. When it looks like it's not going to work out, you have to remember that God is still there. And even if it doesn't turn out how you want it, as long as God is with you, that's all that matters. But you will never believe that if you don't guard your mind. You'll start believing all types of things. That's what's happening in this world. And I'm going to stay on this for about two minutes. I'm going to try my best to close because that's what's happening in the world. Have you noticed that our society is changing? That we are accepting more and more of the world's culture. And I'm talking about the church. Somebody say amen. Now, my wife and I was having this dialogue yesterday, and don't please don't crucify me today, Lord. Ladies, ladies, don't crucify me, please. But my wife and I, I want you to understand where I'm coming from. My wife and I was having this dialogue about the new laws that were passed in Alabama and another state, I forget the other state, about abortion, right? And they make an abortion Ill uh, illegal, even in cases of rape and that type of stuff. And I know a lot of women are very, very bothered, upset by the injustice and the inequalities that come with that because they feel I should have the right to do what I want with my body. Right? How many women feel like that? Okay. Well, y'all y'all already what this joke about to say. Y'all <laughs> y'all already on edge like you about to pull out a stick out your purse to beat me up in the back. Um, but we were having this conversation, and the thing I wanted her to see was that regardless of the outcome, the injustice, I don't agree with it in totality. However, we know that it is a sin to take an innocent life. I can't, that's just Bible, okay? That's just Bible. However, I'm sure there are some caveats. Uh, just like God says, it's not his will for a married couple to divorce. That's in the Bible too. Somebody say amen. It's in the Bible also, but there are also some caveats, such as if the other person cheated or if the, if the person is in a physical abusive relationship, there are some caveats that's scripturally proven that are there to refute the initial statement. But I'm saying that to say this, we see our world is changing and we are now accepting more and more things that are contrary to what the Bible says. Somebody say amen. And if we're not careful, we'll fall subject to the same spirits that's in this world if we don't know God's word. So think you can think you can have a successful relationship without God's word. Think that you can be prosperous and do all that God has called you to without his word. It's essential, church, that we guard our mind, we guard our thoughts, because everything we think controls our actions. Everything we think controls the choices that we make. Everything that we think controls the manifestation. And so you're saying, well, Pastor Mike, I, I want God's will to be performed in my life. How many of you would say that? God, I, God, I, I really do want your will. But how can, watch this, how can you manifest something that you don't even think about? Ah, man, I should have ate some breakfast this morning. How, how can you manifest something you don't even think about? You want a house, but you don't think about the house. You want to be blessed, but you don't think about how to be blessed. You want to be healthy, <laughs> but 
but you don't think about being healthy. Hello, somebody? See, see, you manifest what you put your intentions on. Yeah, yeah, you, you manifest the things that you put time and effort to. So the more that you focus on protecting your mind from the wiles of the enemy, the strategies of the devil, the more successful you will be in manifesting the same thing. For God says, my ways are higher than your ways. My thoughts are higher than your what? And so the only way to have thoughts identical to God's is to get closer to him.